Hello, and welcome back to the State of the Fandom. My name is Neil Fox. I am your president for life of the furry fandom, and with me as always is... Link Labrador, vice president of the furry fandom. Vice president of the furry fandom. Now, very quickly before we get into our topic today, which is the pens that you make. Yep. The presidential line that you're working on, right? Yep. Okay. So before you tell me all about American Wood Art and the charity that you're doing, uh, before we get to that part, um, I am going to say, go back and listen to the podcast that I did just the other day called Is Majira Strawberry an Animal Rapist? I showed this one to, uh, I showed this one to Trey and I just want, give a, give a quick summary of the episode for those who haven't heard it yet. No, oh, it was a very... very stark reminder of not everyone in this world is what they ethical. seem to be what they seem to be or ethical that's true you know someone could be hiding something huge and if they're the only ones who know about it how interesting would that be my love oh, that'd be fascinating it'd be like it'd be almost like a conspiracy almost almost uh you know since you like conspiracies and all that. And you always have, right? Oh, God, yeah. Well, anyway, so the topic of the episode is uh, American Wood Art, yeah. which, is the, uh, which is the company, the LLC, that you run. Yep. Uh, it's a DBA under Fox Labs Corp. Yep. So it's, it's, it's under the same LLC as Fox Labs Corp, but it is a different DBA. And uh, anyway, um, so what is American Wood Art? And how does it help save puppies from dying in kill shelters? Well, one, it, the American Wood Art is a extension of one of my hobbies that I grew up with as a kid. I always had, I always had it as a hobby, as a side hustle, mm-hmm. to just help pay the extra bill, buy the odd tool. Sure. What? Learn, and learn a new skill. So you're talking about your woodworking, right? Yes. Yeah. So tell me about how you learned this skill in the first place. Uh, well, I grew up with uh, woodworking and carpentry. It was huge in the family. Hmm. Your mom does woodworking too? Uh, yes. That's awesome. She did woodworking, painting. Hmm. I haven't seen any of her paintings yet. I would like to see them. I'll have to, I'll text her and ask her. Uh, they were all, uh, you will. It, the canvas that we used was, um... What was it? Plyboard? It was uh, plyboard. Mm. And we first painted white, and then we'd put a um, design on it, typically mm-hmm. taken from a uh, blueprint. Yep. And then we just stencil the blueprint on it, and then color it in. I think the uh, Zen books. Yeah. The like Zen adult coloring books. Oh, those are beautiful. I love those. But like on an industrial, like on a, like on a semi-commercial scale. I was actually thinking one of the products that we should sell at conventions. Yeah. Is do you know how easy it is to make an iron-on T-shirt? Very. You need an iron and you need a T-shirt. Yeah, and we can get one of those presses. I think normally, uh, well, retail they're like five hundred, but we can get one used for like two hundred. Uh, those presses, they're very cheap if you get them used. And so what I'm going to do is there's a company that I found yep. that can make those transfers for us and make them in really high quality, like much higher quality than you can get from Michael's or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I can get them for like 10 cents each. Which means that with our RV that we're going to get, yep. with a heat press, with white t-shirts, and 10 cent transfers... Or it doesn't even have to be white t-shirts. Any color t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And just every t-shirt that we get, we're going to put our, QR, our one of our QR codes on it. Uh, so, I just, you know, mo- the other clothes that we have, whatever that we get donated to the charity, any of the other clothes, we won't put any designs on it, probably. Or we might put, like, a small one or a little patch or something. But on the t-shirts, there will just be probably on the sleeve or like on the corner or something, there'll just be a black and white QR code that links directly to furrypresident.com. Yes. So that people will be walking around in our 
$1 t-shirts where you can get as many t-shirts as you want for $1 or one postage stamp and they will be walking billboards for us all around the world with our QR code. And it's a dollar, guys. It's, it's a, a dollar for a t-shirt. It's Most a dollar. Most t-shirts at yeah. the moment are like $25, $30. You just do some simple arithmetic and you realize yeah, how much the economical solution. Now, back to the pens. Yes, yes. No, tell me about the pens. Yep. So, I originally got into woodworking and woodcraft because I... Was, uh, when I was a child, I was always told that I need to do something more than just sitting around the house playing video games or sitting around the yeah. house and doing nothing. Well, so and it's, it was it's, a, it's not a bad thing to be interested in video games, to be fair. You are very interested in video games, but also interested it is in important for mental health to have balance. To have balance, especially with things that you can do with your hands. Oh, yeah. So, as an example, what I would like to do is maybe on uh, let's say we have a white t-shirt so it doesn't we we get one donated that's a white t-shirt yep and we can put a black and white design on either side Mm -hmm. what if we also gave people a pack of markers with the shirt and the markers don't you don't even have to pay for the markers oh the markers are another stamp but whatever they're 40 cents (laughs) Exactly. people will donate markers to us for this purpose so the markers will be free to us and a dollar for the person buying it so anyway they buy a t-shirt and a set of markers, and they can then color whatever design they want. Let's say it's a design like those psychedelic ones you mentioned, the adult coloring books. Yep. And then they can wear it yeah. wherever they want. Now, back to the pens. Yes, I want to hear about the pens, my love. Go ahead. Yes. Now, the pens. I originally started, I originally was just interested in woodworking and woodcraft, mm-hmm. and eventually I just went... I want to make that. And then from there, I just decided, okay, I'm going to teach myself how to do that. And ten years later, Mm -hmm. I learned how to work with acrylics, work with different size pens, different milling techniques, Mm -hmm. and now I have a product line worth several hundred dollars per pen. Right. Because I sat down and chose to learn a skill most mm-hmm. people don't have. Well, and see, the, the thing that I would like to point out is that the difference between your time being worth $100 an hour or how much do you make at your job now? Oh, Jesus Christ. Not even close to that. Right. Do, how much do they pay you? It's like... 18 an hour or something yeah, like that? 18 an hour. Yeah. So what what you're saying is if someone went on YouTube and did the same thing that you did and learned how to make pens and if they had the tools and materials to make them. So it the difference between them being able to make $100 an hour and them being able to make $18 an hour just like you did. Mm-hmm. The difference is knowledge and resources right knowledge resource and marketing right and so if people give us all the resources we could ever use for free Mm -hmm. then the only difference between 18 an hour and a hundred dollars an hour is knowledge and marketing and marketing right well marketing weirdly enough the marketing was the hardest part for me to master well how lucky that you have a partner who is (laughs) in pd and (laughs) an expert marketer (laughs) Yes. I love having attention on me. It's great. Yes. <laughs> I love just, uh, quite frankly, I love the fact that I don't need the attention around me right. to be secure in this world. Exactly. What you care about, and I, I know this from knowing you, and you can uh, just, I'm going to say something, and then you just respond with whatever you feel, okay? Okay. From knowing you, it seems to me like what is important to you is financial security, yes. right? I want seven for- forms of income in this world. Well, how would you like to have 7,000 forms of income, my love? Even better. Okay. Make it 17,000. 17,000. How about we make a chain of 17,000 pawn shops across America? <laughs> pawn shop. We won't even call it a pawn shop because pawn shops are criminal. Pawn shops are predatory. 
and I don't even like the term. We can call it whatever we want. We can, we'll call it the furry swap, furry swap store, furry swap IRL or something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> whatever. It doesn't. The name doesn't matter. What matters is that people will be able to go in, yep, and scan items that have been donated. So individual members of the public can go in and scan items that have been donated with Google Lens. And they can take things that they need for one dollar or one postage stamp. You okay? Yes, I'm fine. Public works operations. Oh, they must be working on the road. Yep. Um, oh, okay. Cool. So what we can do is we can have what amounts to a pawn shop where everything is free. Because it's not technically free, but a dollar might as well be free. The, the value of the U.S. dollar has gone down so much in the last 10 years that holding your money in dollars is stupid. Mm-hmm. No one should be holding their money in dollars. No. No one. No one should have one dollar in their bank account. They should just use that money to buy stamps. Now, what happens when we buy stamps with this credit card? We get rewards points, right? Yep. And then we can use those rewards points for whatever we want. Yes. So why would someone keep their money in cash when they can use rewards points to pay for whatever they want? And they can buy stamps with it. Yes. It's like getting an instant rebate of, you know, Amazon gift cards or whatever. Those, those rewards points. You, you, you know, you, you take $100 in cash, you buy stamps, and you get $3 in rewards from the company. <laughs> Like, it, it's stupid. It's a, it's a loophole that no one knows about until we tell them about it. Mm-hmm. So, what would you like to discuss next, my love? Uh, I think that's good. Let's do the outro. Okay. Well, this has been a sh- bit of a shorter episode. We are almost to the St. Elmo Steakhouse in, uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana which has the most delicious steak that I've ever tasted. Uh, I'm so excited to buy you the best steak and whiskey that you have ever had, my love. Literally, the best in Indianapolis. Yes. There is no better steakhouse in Indianapolis than St. Elmo's. I see. So, we are going to have some delicious food, and we hope that you enjoy... uh, the podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, whatever, just make sure to give the podcast a like if you can. And uh, if you can, leave a comment, you know, just whatever there is on that platform. And please share this with your friends. And just uh, for for the future reference... Right here. Yep, St. Elmo Steakhouse. I just said that. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, brother. If you can grab my wheelchair, we'll be good to go. Uh, this podcast is in the public domain. Yep. Taking care of you this evening. Okay. Um, since it's your first time, we have been open here since 1902. Okay. We've never offered one appetizer here, and that's our French cocktail. That's what we're known for. It's really yep. good. It is freshly grated horseradish in that sauce. It's going to have nice sinus clearing kicks. We always recommend that, especially for our first time. His sinus is giving him a lot of trouble, so that'd be great. Yep, we'll get one of those. Okay, yep. we're going to go get that going for you. Yep. Um, with the menu, all of our entrees do begin with a complimentary soup course. Uh, either a cup of navy bean soup, which has been a tradition here since we opened. Uh, it's a savory ham and bean soup. Or okay. a glass of chilled tomato juice. You know, okay. So, great to lobster bisque. While I am deciding what else I want, can you get us two cups of lobster bisque and then we'll decide what we want? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I'll also do a water and... So, water shrimp too. cocktail and two lobster bisques. Yeah, absolutely. And then I will take water and he will take... He's dyslexic. Do you have a simpler menu for him? No. I apologize. Okay. You can, no, use, okay. You can use your phone if, if you need to, my love. Um, are you looking for cocktails or wine? Just I'm make a recommendation. For, I'm looking for whiskey. Oh, let me bring you. That's not going to be in that way. I'll bring you a menu over for you. Okay. 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 Um, Maker's um, Mark. Just roll this closer to the table here just so there's somebody sitting here. Yeah. Is that okay for you? Uh, yeah, that'll be okay. fine. As long as, as long as I can still get to it if you I need to use the restroom. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Shout at any of us and we'll move it over for you. That works. Thank you. Do not mind at all. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, thank you for letting me know that. Of course, no problem. I don't. I don't. I don't want to want to be a bother. <laughs> I appreciate it.
truthfully, truth be told, is probably for me not to trip is what it comes down to. So. <laughs> That's totally fair. <laughs> All right. So they're bringing us the shrimp and the soup. Yep. And now you so can. Shrimp cocktail. Uh, he you likes. Your best. I'll yep. bring us the water and I'll bring a whiskey list for you. Sounds good. Thank you. So they obviously do rare steak because this is a very expensive steakhouse. So like, for example, their bone-in prime rib steak is seventy-six dollars. <laughs> no, let me. Sounds awesome. Let me read you the different options for steak. Yep. And then when she comes back, you just let her know what temperature you want it. Yep. And which steak you want. Okay. Okay. So you can pick any of these options you like. Yeah. Right? We have porterhouse. Ribeye, filet, filet mignon, prime strip, flat iron, and bone prime rib. Uh, they also have prime dry aged. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. I will probably get. I've, I last time I had their linguine. That was really good. I will do. Uh, you know what? They're all amazing. Let's just go with prime rib. <laughs> Why not? I'm not super hungry, so I think I'll just split it with you. It says 38 ounces, <laughs> so I'm guessing that'll be more than enough for both of us. I would hope so, yes. Okay. Uh, now, if you want the prime rib... Okay, so, so then what you need to do is when she comes back, you tell her you want the prime rib, and you just tell her what temperature you want it, okay? Okay. Do you need me to help you read it for you, my love? That's right. You bourbon, can bourbon whiskey. Okay. Make this mark. We can also ask them for some of their bottles, if you'd like some of their fancy liquor bottles. They, they always have like 50 of them on a hand. That would look really nice on the show. It really would. And people would pay a dollar for that, right? I don't know. So why don't we just ask them to give us whatever they have on hand and we'll take it home with us in the Uber. Seems pretty easy, right? I was also thinking, if you would like to, my love, and it, it is up to you, if you would like to, I would like to go see a movie tonight since my night was spoiled last time. I would like to go see one with you. And okay. to have puppy corn with you. Okay. I don't know. It says Buffalo Trace. I, I don't know what that is. Just ask her for a recommendation when she gets back, my love. She's the expert. I don't know anything about alcohol whatsoever. Let me just go on the AMC app. Oh, I don't know how to download it. Okay. AMC. And what I'll do also is I'll ask them if they have any type of like rewards program or something, since we're gonna be we're gonna be spending probably a hundred dollars anyway. If they have some type of like, oh, we'll get a free appetizer if you give us your email or whatever, it might as well. <laughs> some some places do discounts on drinks too for that. I'll ask them about the Buffalo Trace. Okay. It's something different. So Buffalo Trace, prime rib, medium rare, medium rare. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to tell her that, or would you like to? I got it. Okay. I got you covered. Thank you, my love. Mm. Now, here is the future itinerary for tonight. Yep. And if you would like to change anything about it, that is okay. Okay. So, we have a hotel reserved. Yep. Next to where you work. Yep. If you want to sleep there, we can. Or I can just cancel it. Let's sleep there. Okay. So it's the Super 8 that's right next to where you work. It's like a mile away. Okay, cool. So I figure let's, uh, once we're done eating, we'll go watch a movie. Yep. And then uh, we'll grab whatever. Well, we'll get a movie theater that's over close to where we live. Yep. 
and then whatever um, uh, whatever stuff that you need for work tomorrow. Yep. We'll hop back in an Uber, yep. or or uh, or back. You know, we'll go in the car. We'll go in the car to the re- to the hotel. Yep. And then since I already paid for it, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Uh, and then instead of staying at the house for the next couple of days, we can stay at the hotel. Because I need I need people to clean up the house anyway. And I can do all that from my phone. I don't have to be there in person for people to clean the house. Mm-hmm. I can pay them money on my phone. <laughs> yeah. So, because there is nothing in the house that I feel uncomfortable about people stealing, except in the garage... We just keep the garage door locked and we leave the door unlocked. Or we leave the door locked with the with the little key on the door. So we have two things we need to do tonight, my love. Yeah. Number one is to enjoy ourselves and watch a movie. Yep. Number two is we need to make a copy of the key. Because I need to be able to put a key on the door for while we're gone. A copy of which key? The that house key. We have a copy. Oh, where is the copy, my love? I don't is, know where it is. It is in the lockbox. Okay. It's in the lockbox at home? Yep. Oh, well, then great. I'll Hold just, on. I'll just go and get a copy of it made tomorrow. That's okay. Well, we, we have a copy of the key already. Oh, then, the, sorry. So the step then that needs to be done is we just need to put the lockbox on the door. Yep. So that the people that are coming to clean for us can unlock it. Yep. So... Uh, so, uh, task one is to enjoy ourselves, mm-hmm. relax, celebrate our success, yeah. and watch a movie. Yeah. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we put the key on the door, on the front of the door before we go to the hotel. Because then I can let people in remotely mm-hmm. by just giving them the code. Yeah. So, that is what we'll do. And we'll sleep at the Super 8, okay? Well, you can see that. Um, and I did make sure they have free breakfast. Oh, awesome. From, I think it's 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., so I don't know what time you'll be leaving. But since you won't have a 30-minute drive, what time does your shift actually start? Uh, 6.30. Yeah. So then if the breakfast starts at 6, we should be able to go and get the breakfast at 6 a.m., mm-hmm. eat together. Yep. And it'll be up to you. If you want to, you can go and eat at your place of work. Because that's where I will be spending the day. I'll just be at the hospital working on my computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, if you want to, we can eat at the hotel. It is up to you, my love. Let's just eat at the hotel. Okay. So then the plan would be, for tomorrow morning, mm-hmm. eat at the hotel. Oh. Question. Yes. Thank you. Uh, He's looking for a recommendation for whiskey. I'm looking for a recommendation for whiskey. Okay. For uh, anything that's sourced locally or in Indiana. Um, the only thing we have would be our Elmo bourbon, which is a cherry vanilla flavor bourbon that's made in Indiana. Would that go? Is that very well with the shape you had? Um, I mean, really, your personal preference, if you like, it's gonna be a little sweeter because it's got a cherry vanilla flavor. Okay, that's more of a dessert. Okay. Um, but he likes the, more straight whiskey. So all of our, uh, on the first page, all of our whiskeys and bourbons that are listed here are actually our own barrels. So they're not necessarily the same as the state, but they're actually St. Elmo barrels. Oh, okay. um, do you like a little more peach or do you like a little smoother finish? Smoother finish? We change it up so often. How do you like your bourbon? Basically, well, do you want it with ice or do you want it? Yes, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Yes. No, like, um, I would say probably our preserve, our number 20 that we have is like a butterscotch cookie editing. No, I got back to that. Pepper in there, which is not going to be super sweet. Absolutely. Do you want to do a large cube or regular ice? I have a quick question yes. as well. Since I have enjoyed this place in the past and I would like to come here more often, 
check out to. Right. Um, so That's all I care about. What, the best way to go about it is, yeah. um, so obviously coming here for dinner is wonderful, but if you, um, want to, if you have like uh, opportunities to go to lunch and things like that, course, um, yeah. if you become a regular, maybe just sit at the bar, like at lunch, okay. sit at the bar and start talking to them, get, get them to know you, and then they'll kind of introduce you to management, and management then goes to um, the people that, because we only open it up, I think, once a year, um, and they kind of, it's... Some of it's just being best friends with our owner. Some of it's actually being, you know, like somebody loyal to the restaurant. So it kind of, it kind of balances out that way. I understand. Yeah. So I just, um, if you could write the information down for me, yeah, absolutely. So that I can, uh, I'll look it up online and see um, the the different locations and all that. If you have yeah. business cards, yeah, absolutely, or I'll get that for you. Well, That'd be fantastic. Thank you. For you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You're welcome. We you got the lobster bisque and then the shrimp cocktail here. When you're trying the shrimp, a little sauce does go a very long way. It is very strong. Yeah. Did you tell me what you wanted to do for dinner as well? Or do you need a minute? We're going to share the bone and prime rib. Okay, how would, you, how would you like that? Medium rare. Warm and red center. Okay, and did you want to do a baked potato, mashed potato, green beans, fries? I like mashed potatoes. Okay, absolutely. And we started with the lobster bisque there. All right. Did you want anything other than the lobster Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. The only person to have walked into this restaurant today wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. 
Buy every item in your store and donate it to the homeless shelter? Why not?
right now whether or not I sign this piece of paper. Now, you can work with me to raise your minimum wage to $100 an hour, or I can force you to by law and take your company. So, you can either do it of your own free will, or I can force you to with the power of the federal government. It is up to you. Now, Mr. Bailey, will you pledge right now here on my presidential podcast? Will you pledge to give your employees $100 an hour? And this is a part of our business, or our GM here. Okay, thank you so much. And if you yell at me, Mr. Bezos, I'm going to have you escorted out of the Oval Office by the Secret Service. So, I'm not going to sign And then I'm going to sign the paperwork while you sit on the street. Yes, yes, Record from the Oval Office. Telling Jeff Bezos to go fuck himself. I'm going to buy 51 percent of everyone. And then he has to pay the employees 50. And then he has to pay the employees a thousand dollars an hour. Because I own 51 percent. And so what the employees minimum wage at Amazon is, is my decision. Not as the president, but as 51 percent of Amazon. So you can pay it. So Mr. Bezos, I have an, I have a proposal for you. You can choose right now to pay every employee at Amazon hundred dollars an hour. Or you can pay them a thousand dollars. The choice is yours. You may have five minutes to decide. Okay, it's been five minutes, Mr. Bezos. What is your decision? It doesn't matter. I'm signing it anyway. Uh, excuse me. Uh, security, uh, security service. I, I just need you to escort Mr. Bezos to his private jet, and I need to arrest. I need you to have him arrested for financial fraud. But it doesn't matter if you did any financial fraud or not. You can investigate. You can investigate him into bankruptcy. So he has no power at all sitting in the Oval Office. He is just the same as any other human being. And that would scare him Oh, try and brag me with what? Money? I don't care about your money. I think your money is worth it. I think your money has zero dollars. This one thing, Mr. Bezos, has more value than the hundred trillion, hundred billion U.S. dollars that you own. This one stamp has more value. And if you don't believe it, then you can hold your money in U.S. dollars until it is worth nothing. Well, the thing is, they don't hold their money in U.S. dollars. They hold their money in assets. I know that. He knows that. He knows that. But the public does not know that. That's why we have assets. Because assets are power. Money is not power. No. Money is uninterested. It is. That's good. That's what ultimately want to protect us. We don't give a shit about how much money they have. If anything, that's the only reason he stuck around, was because I do not care that he has $800,000 in there. I don't care. That is meaningless to me. Your houses. Okay, yeah, you got houses. Cool. I have a house. It's perfectly easy. I don't have three houses because I don't need three houses. We'll get three houses, but we'll put them on the same block. And we'll put them on Airbnb. And we'll rent them out on Airbnb. Because setting it up like that makes it very easy for um, cleaners to just have a working yeah, schedule. Did you? That we can set the price for an Airbnb to be anything we want. I did know that. Now there's recommended price. But Airbnb cannot force me to rent at market time. You can do $900,000 a month if you want it. Let me explain. Yeah? If I bought, let's say, an old rundown part of Chicago, mm-hmm. and we bulldozed it and renovated it in the same house. Yep. Again, within federal guidelines, within the building code, all, all with the proper paperwork, everything. Mm-hmm. If we did that, 
and we rented every single tiny house for one dollar a night. Airbnb could not stop us from doing that. Everything we sell, regardless of if it's a night in a tiny house or whatever, everything we sell is a dollar or a postage stamp. Now, how many applications would we get if you and I built out of bulldozing in a horrible neighborhood in Chicago into 3,000 beautiful little tiny houses? How many applications would we get for a, for a housing option that costs $30 a month? How many applications? How many people will give us their address and their business and their phone number for the opportunity to be able to rent one of our tiny houses? And then, pretty legally, we can send them as much money as regardless of whether they live in our tiny house or not. Which of you two would like to start with the steak? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> An extra plate here for you. So You're welcome. How does everything look? It's great. Thank you. Can I bring anything else for you, Sylvia? Uh, would you be able to cut that in half my love, or should we ask them to go for life? Oh, you just posted on TikTok. <laughs> I'll check back on you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have never seen a steak this big. Yes, you didn't know what 38 ounces meant. No, I know what it meant. But you didn't consider what it meant because you said you've never seen one this big. <laughs> I don't get 30 ounce steaks. <laughs> you do now. Okay, let's see if they finally unblocked my Twitter or if I'm still in purgatory. Thank you.